Radyo Ninyo Radyo Alang sa Katawhan Alang sa Batang Balaan Nagkadaiyang istorya sa panag-ambit, pag-alagad, panaghinigog maay o debosyon pag-atukion Radyo Ninyo Gasa Alang sa Katawhan Sa kasing-kasing sa pag-alagad, Radyo Ninyo Bagong higala sa kahanginan Radyo Ninyo Radyo Alang sa Katawhan Alang sa Batang Balaan Adlaw sa buong mapagpalang araw Pilipinas. Good day to everyone watching us all over the world. Welcome to Radyo Ninyo. Radyo alang sa katauhan, alang sa batang balaan. Today is Saturday, May 29, 2021. I am Sheila Megamapon and welcome to Radyo Ninyo. Radyo alang sa katauhan, alang sa batang balaan. Good day po sa lahat ng mga nakikinig at nanonood sa atin today. Uh, siguro uh, nagtataka kayo kung bakit po ako mag-isa. Ang sad no, di ba? Mag-isa ka lang. Pero anyway, on the lighter note, mag-isa lang po ako ngayon kasi si Father I. Mark and si Fry Ronel, may mga different activities po sila na kailangan i-attend. So, importanteng mga gagawin, importanteng tasks. Uh, for their congregation. So, for today's usapan, I will join you and we will be graced by an Augustinian sister. So, I'm very interested and very curious about her, about her life. I've been reading or I've read about her only online. So, parang kilala ko siya just because of what I read online. And I can't wait to meet her, I can't wait to talk to her and ask her about her story, her journey of uh, being part of an Augustinian family. So for the past episodes, the last four episodes, yung mga guests natin or yung mga guest speakers natin, puro mga pare. Oh, so uh, puro mga friars na part ng Order of St. Augustine. So ngayon naman, we will talk or we will be graced, or yung guest natin is an Augustin- Augustinian sister. So, sa mga siguro nagtatanong dyan na bakit ano, so, bakit Augustinian sister? So, hindi lang naman sa order of St. Augustine, but also in other congregations, yung mga pare, may mga counterpart din sila. Yun yung tawag sa kanila. Kung may mga friar sa order of St. Augustine, meron din namang mga Augustinian sisters. So, other congregations, they also have their counterparts. So, ngayon, uh, we will talk about their congregation. But before that, allow me to share to you na we're very grateful na hindi namin ikinakala na four episodes. So, it's been a month uh, doing this usapan, doing this kwentuhan. And uh, actually, I ask some of my friends, some of the people that I know of what they think of Asapan. And yun nga, parang yung iba sinasabi nila na it's a good point kasi or it's a good program because we're able to share the story of the Augustinians and not just the story of the Augustinians but on a personal journey kasi mas nakikilala natin sila based on their life and each one of them sa mga guests natin the other weeks, ano, iba-iba yung story nila, iba-iba yung journey nila. And uh, uh, yung iba sa kanila, leaders ng kanilang respective group. So may sa Vicarate, and then may dating prior provincial. And ngayon naman, just to give you a hint, isa din siyang mother general. So, come to think of, It, I'll be talking to a mother general. It's such an honor. It's such a privilege. And I can't wait to talk to her. So, sa mga 
listeners natin dyan, sa mga viewers natin dyan, I am also excited as you are. So, I won't take this long. We will take a short break. And after that, let's get to know her and the story of her congregation. So, please stay tuned only here in Radyo Nino. Radyo Alam sa Katauhan, Alam sa Batang Balaan. We stand before the grand horizon Five hundred years of faith, grateful today We bear the gift of mission Totally yours, we give ourselves Faithfully yours until the end To your mission, Lord, we give our yes At ibang dako Hatid ang iyong salita At paglilingkod Inang Maria Ang siyang gabay na mitlubot Nalaganap Alam ng iyong misyon Lima Kalatos na katuigan Pagtuong na daw At tas na kurasya Sign our world today will come to believe is the love we have for one and all. We bear the gift of mission, mercy, compassion, justice, and peace. Ma kagatos na katuwi. Welcome back to Radyo Nino. Radyo alang sa katauhan, kalang sa batang balaan. For today's episode, I am very honored uh, that I'll be talking, I'll do a, a little kwentuhan with one of the Augustinian sisters who, uh, who's currently assigned here in our country. So, para po makilala nyo and mapakinggan natin kung ano po yung kwento niya at ng kwento ng kongregasyon nila, uh, I would like to welcome Sister Nisette. So, Sister, hello po. Good day. Hello. Good day, Sheila. Yes, yeah, Sister. Uh, so, first po, Sister, kamusta naman po? Uh, can you tell us po uh, kung saan po kayo ngayon and uh, ano po ba yung assignment yung ngayon? So, first of all, I am happy today and uh, we have just finished a gathering of sisters and we were so happy to see each other through Zoom because that's the only way we can reach each other now. So at the present, I am in La Consolation Convent, 273 Santolan, San Juan City. So here in Metro Manila. 
So, sister, uh, you're in Metro Manila po. So, kamusta naman po dyan? Uh, ano po ba yung situation natin ngayon? Especially na we're still battling po the COVID-19 pandemic po. Yeah, so everybody knows that the resurgence of the pandemic calls us to, again, stay at home and be very careful in uh, going out in the crowd. And so our sisters know that and they stay home. And because of this, we have a lot of time to, to pray and to be together in the community. And of course, also to help our neighbors. So we have put up a community pantry in our convent and so that the people can come and make their marketing here because we realize how difficult the situation is now for our neighbors here in San Juan. And uh, we are happy because when they come, they're also very grateful for what we can give them, the little that we can give them. So, ang ganda po, sister, na uh, your congregation is also part of the initiative of a community pantry. Uh, but before we go further to, the, to your COVID-19 response, sister, uh, I, I knew and I've read online, sister, na ikaw po po yung mother general ng association or Augustinian, rather, the congregation of the Augustinian Sisters of Our Lady of Consolation. So, uh, Sister, uh, can you tell us po uh, of what your congregation is all about? Like, ano po ba yung uh, story ng congregation niyo po? Yeah, so our congregation is named Augustinian Sisters of Our Lady of Consolation. And at this moment, I am ending my term, my second term, as a superior general of the congregation. So our congregation started in the Philippines in 1883. And these are um, Spanish sisters who came from Barcelona because they were invited to take care of orphans left by their parents who died from cholera epidemic in Manila. And so they came to take care of the children and uh, happened that two of them were blood sisters. So these are Rita and Consuelo. And these two blood sisters, they stayed, whereas the other Spanish sisters went home because they got sick and they had difficulty adjusting to our weather and life here. But these two sisters, they stayed and they learned to love the Filipinos and the little children they were taking care of. And so they put up the... Asilo de Mandaloya, which is a, an orphanage for the children, and they helped the children grow and they acted as their parents so that the children will have a normal life. But then the Spanish-Philippine Revolution started in 1896, and they were so affected by this. In fact, they took care of the children and also were very open to the Katipuneros at that time. But then in, 19, in 1898, they were told by their superiors, uh, Philippine, uh, the Spanish superiors here in the Philippines to go back home because they are not safe here. So against the will, the two sisters went home to Barcelona and stayed in the original convent there. But then they continued communicating with the sisters here. And the sisters, the Filipino sisters, they left here, they decided, to come together. They, they did not disband. When they were told by the superior uh, priest, the uh, OSA provincial at that time, to disband and go home, they decided to come together and stay. And so they were having communication with the sisters in Spain. And the sisters, the two sisters in Spain, really wanted to come back to the Philippines. But then Mother Rita got ill. And so she died in 1904. And after she died, Mother Consuelo, her younger sister, came back to the Philippines. And 1904, until she died, 1940, she stayed in the Philippines, never to go back again to Spain. And she nurtured the congregation. So starting with the orphans and the orphanage, later on, the orphans had to go to school. So they started school. So the first school that they built was La Consolation College Mendiola here in Manila. And then later on, they were invited to start schools in other places too. 
So they went to Negros Occidental and started many schools there. Actually, La Consolation College Bacolod is the first Catholic school in Negros Occidental. And we were able to um, put up there, I think around seven schools. And they also put up schools in Bicol, in Iriga and Baao. And later on, they also put up in other places. And so at present, we have 22 schools in the congregation. But our congregation is not only involved in schools, we also have social pastoral centers. So centers where we really live and work very closely with the people, especially the underprivileged, the ones we call the last, the lost and the least. And so these are communities that we build and we help them in their livelihood. In some places, we help them build their homes, especially during calamities. And these are people who are very close to our hearts. And of course, another aspect of our mission is foreign missions. So we started sending Filipino missionaries to other countries. And now actually we have also Vietnamese, we have Indonesian and we have a Japanese sister. So slowly, slowly we have become at this point in time an intercultural congregation, starting from a Filipino congregation. Now it's an intercultural congregation. Wow, ang ganda po ng story, sister. Uh, hearing that story from you, uh, parang nag-goosebumps po. Para pong, uh, ano, baka may calling. And then joke lang naman po. Uh. Pero, uh, sister, uh, going to, uh, to uh, on a personal note naman, sister, uh, ikaw po, uh, paano po ba kayo nagsimula or bakit po kayo napunta sa congregation of the Augustinian Sisters? Uh, was there any other congregations in mind or uh, did you ever think, sister, na nung bata ka pa, parang you're led to this, uh, to this journey po na maging ano, uh, part ng religious congregation? So I really come from a religious family. In my mother's side, all the firstborns, were either a priest or a nun. And in my father's side, we also have an uncle who is uh, who was a Dominican priest. Actually, he was the first Dominican priest, uh, Filipino Dominican priest, uh, Father Benito Vargas. And so it's in the family that you see religious come in and out. And so when I was a little girl at five, I already wanted to become a sister. And uh, that grew until I was 11 years old when I had a chance to attend a final profession of one of our sisters. And, you know, it dawned on me, I like to be like her. And then of course, when I went to high school, when I went to college, I almost forgot it because I got busy with many things. But when I was in third year college, I was studying actually at the University of the Philippines when I saw some sisters and all of a sudden it came back to me. Oh, I like to be like them. And after that, I started searching. I went from one door to the other convent to be able to see if they will accept me. And I was 18 years old at that time. And most of the convents I went to did not want to accept me because I was still young and I was told you finish your studies. But I don't know, one day I came to La Consolation Convent to visit my cousin. I have also a cousin sister here, but it was not because I wanted to apply. I just wanted to visit her. And when I came in here, she wasn't here, but you know whom I met? The mother general. Oh. And the mother general, so Evangelista de San Agustin. So she interviewed me and I told her, I've been going from one convent to the other and I'm looking for a convent that I would like to get to know. And she told me, why not here? And so she said, but, but how will you get to know us? You have to study with us, she said. And so I transferred to La Consolation College, Manila, so that I will get to know the sisters. I was just there for one semester, and I already said, oh, mama, I'm going to enter the convent. Oh. So I, was, I entered, I was 18 years old. And you know what? I just wanted to be a sister to, to be able to pray and to help the poor. That was my main idea of what a sister is. But 
to my surprise and many surprises of my life, many things happened to me. I was given the opportunity to study, I really love studying. And so I went for a master's degree for uh, educational management. And then later on, I had the opportunity to study abroad. And so I studied um, religious studies and I took their bachelor's, master's and doctorate in the Catholic University of Louvain, where I had a special study on the New Testament. And so this was, this was really a surprise for me. I never expected I would be able to go and study the New Testament. But then I remember when I was a little girl, I loved reading the Bible. When I was a novice, I loved reading commentaries. And I didn't realize that God has a gift for me to be able to study the Word of God. And the word of God is what strengthens me. The word of God is what revitalizes me, gives me life, and gives me joy in my life. And so at present, after my studies, I had this wonderful opportunity to teach in seminaries. So I taught in um, Mary Hill School of Theology, in San Carlos uh, Seminary, also in Loyola School of Theology and other schools of theology here in the city. And I really enjoyed teaching scriptures. But then, but then God called me to be a leader of our community. So at first, I did not want, the first time I was invited to be a leader, I did not accept because I thought my service is for the church. But then later on, I was again invited, nominated to be a leader of the community. And so I accepted it. I thought this is already what God wants for me to do. And I really felt that God chose me to be a leader of this community. And so I have been a leader already for almost eight years. I'm ending my term this December and I'm looking forward to it so that I can go back to teaching the scriptures. Parang, I know, sister, no, there is that uh, no, inside scream of yours saying that I want to go back to teaching. Parang, <laughs> I want to go back to teaching the scriptures. Upon uh, hearing your story, sister, uh, it is, it's a very good uh, story. Parang first time ko po narinig na uh, parang halos lahat ng miyembro ng pamilya, parang it runs in the blood to be part of a religious organization. And growing up and you've been imbibing that you grew up uh, learning the church learning about our faith reading the scriptures where some of the children siguro naalala ko yung second sister at the age of five or growing up parang yung bible siguro parang nasa altar lang siguro namin parang hindi ko pa siya nababasa but hearing that from you ang ganda pong uh, story and then yung story nyo po na you came from you visited one door to the other, visiting convents where you wanted to apply, looking for a door that would open for you to be accepted as part of their community. And nung hindi mo na plano sanang mag-apply dun, and nonetheless, yung na-meet mo pa, Mother General, and here you are, sister, as a Mother General yourself. So parang you were destined or parang ano ba yun? Parang providential din siya na Mother General yung na-meet mo and then uh, little did you know that later on you'll also be having or you also wear that hat of being a Mother General. Yeah. So, so sister, uh, as, as tagal po ng experience nyo po sa congregation, what were those things that, because uh, I, 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 I could recall as you mentioned kanina na your congregation was also established because of a certain uh, health situation. Like it was the cholera at the time. And then now we are facing the COVID-19 pandemic. So it's another health crisis that we are facing. So uh, ano po ba yung challenge being the head of the organization, of the congregation? So how did you respond to the challenges po? Yeah. So actually... Um, in our study of our congregational history, we have already seen that, the sisters, we have seen that, that our foundresses responded to a, a social situation in their time, a, a situation of poverty, a situation of um, children having 
uh, no parents. And so our sisters, the original sisters, the foundresses, they responded to that situation and they went through all the difficulties that, that, had, that brought them, <clears throat> but at the same time, they endured. They endured in that. And now, this is a similar thing that's happening and actually we're having our chapter. So a general chapter is a very special event in a congregation. It is an ecclesial event where we have to look into our life mission and see whether we are still on the right track. We're going to the vision and mission and the charism of our congregation. And so at this point in time, a similar situation comes where we have a pandemic. And again, Many people are suffering, many people are dying. So we are called to respond to this situation as our foundresses have responded to that situation. But also, you know, even somewhere during the martial law days, when we saw the situation of poverty, of uh, violation of human rights, our sisters really stood up for human rights. And so that was also a point when we would see that we are very much um, inserted in the social situation of our country. So at this present time, at the beginning, you know, of course, everybody was afraid when we, when we heard about this COVID-19. And so our first reaction was to go and kneel on our knees. So we decided we are going to have um, adoration of the Blessed Sacrament at least half day every day to pray for the world. So we'd been praying for almost three weeks and then we started asking our questions. But what are we going to do for the people who are suffering? They have lost their jobs, the jeepney drivers, the uh, tricycle drivers have lost their jobs. So what do we do? We just go and sit down here and enjoy ourselves, our company, enjoy our community, which is wonderful. So we realized we have to do something. And so the first attempts we had was we packed, you know, food uh, stuff, and then we put them in our Jeep and we went around the city to give food to those, the beggars and those we thought needed food. And then later on, we started looking for the jeepney drivers. So again, we gave them food. So we started with that because we thought we, we cannot be stopped by the fear we have to go beyond the fear. We have to transcend our fear because evangelization must go on. It has to continue in season, out of season. And because of that, so we started doing little things here and there. We started going out to, to overcome our fears. But of course, there are risks. There are risks. There are some dangers. And I have experienced it. I got COVID. Yes, but... So you were once uh, uh, infected or you contracted the virus? Yeah. I don't know where because when uh, after I got the COVID, I, I asked my sisters around me, please go for a swab and, and nobody had it. So it was only me. So thanks be to God, it was only me. And um, probably I got it uh, with people, you know, when you go and visit people around or you join some actions, probably I got it there. But then anyway, uh, it's not so, um, what do you call this, <laughs> so worse because um, it was mild, mild with pneumonia. So after 10 days, I was out in the hospital. But I would really say that even until it uh, happened in February, but even until now, I have not uh, regained my full strength. So that is the effect of the COVID um, virus in me. But now, because of that experience, I understand and I can um empathize and i can be compassionate for all those who undergo this experience and so when i hear a family having covid and i hear nowadays you know in the beginning isn't it they were just numbers for me but now these are people i know families i know families of our sisters and some of our sisters also had it and so now you know i'm affected when i hear these things 
it's why like, because i've experienced myself it's becoming real sister it's getting yeah, yeah because be, before when when the covid yeah when, when the covid started it was all about numbers we're all hearing about statistics we, we hear that there are a lot of people getting infected and then uh, as the months passed by it was going nearer to our place it was going uh to people or it, it got to people whom we in uh, our whom we know firsthand yung parang immediate na po yung naging effect niya sister kasi uh, i could also uh, relate that here in the basilica at first uh, we were all just here inside the shrine because uh, we cannot go out and then Cebu City was under lockdown and then at first we were, we were very complacent because of course we're just inside parang uh, wala namang mga tao nakalabas pasok so kami lang and then all of a sudden when supposedly the church was allowed to open and then somebody or someone a single person was infected and then we were not able to open so parang doon na doon na bumagsak lahat parang we were put into a situation na yes covid is real parang it was just not about numbers anymore it's already here it, it's present and that that feeling yung iba sister no yung parang yung kakilala mo mismo yung family members mo mismo and then ang hirap ang hirap po ng situation but Yes, uh, we really have to rise above the situation and do even the simplest things that we can do to help our brothers and sisters who are also facing the same situation. You know what? When the COVID broke out in March of 2020, so as a leader, I asked myself, where am I? Where am I going to bring my sisters? And so I really read the news. So I read the news as far as I can understand what this COVID is. And then I reflected on it. And then I wrote a circular. And the circular was to give strength and hope to the sisters and th that their fears be allayed because God is with us. So I started writing circulars. Every month I would write a circular to strengthen the sisters and to tell them our mission continues. So our sisters, you know, they started opening schools. They opened the schools. So all our 22 schools open. And they, they started um, uplifting their, their um, skills, learning media and all these things so that they can open the schools and have online uh, classes or module classes. And so I was telling, go ahead, go ahead. And of course, with all the care, possible protocols we have to follow, at the same time, we have to continue the mission of Jesus. And that's what they did. And of course, we are also very careful going out, but our mission has to continue. And so we are doing what we can. So now we have to think of new ways, new strategies of doing our mission of living communities because of one of our charism, the Augustinian charism is community, building a communion of communities. And so what we can do so that we can continue the mission that God has given us. So sister, with all these challenges that we are facing now and the, and the congregation is facing now, was there ever a point in your life uh, that you wanted to stop and you wanted to give up? Was there ever a point or uh, that faith in you that strengthens you uh, was really the one that made you uh, continue and keep going? Yeah. No, I, I really did not feel like giving up. Actually, I went into prayer. When things are not so clear, I would go to prayer. And then when I see something, a light, I will... I will express it i will write about it i will do it so if i think i should do something i will do it i start doing it and then others will follow so um i think the experience of, of we are augustinians and augustine taught us that our action be based on our contemplation and our contemplation results to our action so i think that process of entering oneself and then going out again and entering oneself, I think that gave me the, the spirit, 
that gave me the light to be able to, to direct my congregation because the congregation needs somebody now to direct. Because if I cannot direct, what will happen? All of us will go in different places. But I'm thankful to God that God showed me how to direct the congregation. Because at this point in time, we are intact. Uh, as I told you, just this afternoon or the, the whole day, we had sessions on the rule of St. Augustine. And we were in Zoom. And I saw all of the sisters there listening, participating, reflecting, praying together. So I felt we are one as a community. And this, this COVID-19 virus did not succeed in dividing the community. And this COVID-19 virus challenged us to do our mission in any way possible. But which means in the end, it's Jesus who will triumph here. And so we would like, for the next chapter, we would like to be prophets of hope because now the world needs hope. So we'd like to be prophets of hope through our actions of compassion so that the world may feel people care for them. And because people care for them, they will have hope. So we'd like to bring that message to the world. Wow, ang ganda po nun, Sister, Prophets of Hope. Ang ganda nun na uh, we are called to be Prophets of Hope. So speaking of hope, Sister, speaking of which, uh, what would you like to say to aspiring young female or fi- a young female na gusto pong maging part of a religious congregation or who felt that there is that call but doesn't know how to respond, doesn't know how to answer, how would you like to invite them or what would you like to say to them? Yeah, so of course I would like to invite them because if I look into my life, I really have a beautiful life. I feel uh, there's so much joy in my life as a consecrated person. So I'd like also many young women and young girls to experience what I'm experiencing. And probably uh, first is look into their heart. They have to look into their heart and what is the heart saying to them? And what is the spirit that they have in the heart? For example, for St. Augustine, uh, St. Augustine's spirit was a spirit of search. He was searching, he was restless until he found God. And when I was a novice, I experienced that too, that I was so restless. And there I realized I'm an Augustinian because I have a trait of St. Augustine. Yeah, and so they have to discover in the heart. And if they feel that they are called, they are called, give it a try, give it a try. Because nowadays, sometimes they feel they are called, but they're afraid to follow. Yeah, so we have also many aspirants. They want to become sisters, but when it's almost time to enter, they're afraid to come in. Yeah, so I think you have to give yourself a try and give God also a chance to see to, to invite you. And when you are invited and you found a congregation, usually the congregation you will find is that which vibrates with your spirit. It, whatever the gift or the charism of that congregation which vibrates in your spirit, then that congregation will be the congregation for you. So if, for example, you have a very strong um, sense of um, the inner life and then you would like to search more and search for God and search for the meaning of life, search for yourself, then maybe that's a sign that you're being called to be Augustinian. Or if, for example, you have this very strong desire to pray and pray and pray and be a contemplative, so probably you are called to a contemplative life. So each one has a call and that call you'll have to discover and probably the congregation will help you discover what your call is. But then, when you are already in formation, you know, the first stage of formation, you get to know yourself, then you get to know the community, you get to know God, and then you become an apostle or a disciple of Jesus. You are sent for a mission and you bring, you become now a, the arm, the hands, the feet, the eyes of Jesus wherever you go. So then when you discover this is the life for you, 
there are difficulties and there are challenges, but there are many joys as well. I think it's similar in any kind of life, in the married life, you have joys, you have all sufferings and pains. That's the same for all. But of course, the different uh, kinds of pains we will have to discover, like living in community. You live with people you never knew who come from different backgrounds. So it can be very difficult in the beginning, but later on, when you get to know them, you start to love them, you start to be friends with one another, there is so much joy in friendship. That is community life. So I think you have to give yourself a chance and you have to give God also a chance when God calls you. Wow, thank you for that message, sister. Uh, ngayon naman po, sister, uh, to, do you have any message or what is your message rather to your fellow sisters who might be watching, who might be listening to us, uh, who are also in this journey at this point in time? Yeah. So as I told you, we just uh, studied the rule of St. Augustine. And in the rule, we are invited to be lovers of spiritual beauty. And when I read that for the first time, and when I reflect on that in the last chapter of the rule, chapter eight, I really am so attracted to it. I'm fascinated to be a lover of spiritual beauty. And I would like to be like that. And so I would like all my sisters to the whole congregation to be lovers of spiritual beauty. And of course, God is beautiful. God, um, so ancient, ever so new, no? the beauty of God. And so therefore, uh, actually to be a lover of spiritual beauty is to be a lover of God and a lover of your neighbors because spiritual beauty is charity. And so I think when we love God and love our neighbors, I think that is the full meaning of life. That is what life is all about. So there are many things to consider around, but the very essence of our life is to love God and to love our neighbor. And there is where we will find joy, peace, serenity, and freedom in this life. So in other words, our life is full because we are related to God, we are related to our neighbors, and our love for our neighbors is our love for God because we cannot love God if we do not love our neighbors. And so, of course, like Augustine too, and like the, the gospel writer, St. John, I would like to tell my sisters to grow in the love of God and the love of neighbor, and to simplify it, to love one another. Because when we love one another, we love God. Oh, oh, oh.
Said for sharing to us your story and the story of your congregation. It was truly a wonderful usapan, a wonderful kwentuhan with you, sister. And I'm looking forward to more makabuluhang usapan with you. And thank you very much to Sheila. You're a very good host because you made me speak a lot <laughs> and shared <laughs> a lot. Yeah, but I was really so excited with all that I have said and it comes from my heart. Yes, thank you so much, sister. And uh, during our conversation, I could really see na parang I was telling to Father Jan kanina na uh, I can see it from your face po, sister, na you're very happy. You're, yung makikita mo yung joy and peace and it resonates po. Parang uh, it's so clear na you're, you're truly living a, a wonderful life uh, as an Augustinian sister. Thank you. Thank you very much. So thank you so much, sister. And to all our listeners and viewers, thank you for being with us today. Uh, please don't forget to follow our official social media accounts of the Augustinians and the Basilica Minore del Santo Nino de Cebu, which are flashed on your screens. I am Sheila, and see you for our next usapan only here in Radio Nino. Radio Alang sa Katauhan. Alang sa Batang Balaan.